we welcome you both here and, uh, and at home. And whether you're joining us from the murder campus or you're part of the Bandura campus, but it's so good to see people in the room. I mean, it's just amazing. It's been nine months, nine months just about uh, since we met last time. And so we're thankful to God, really thankful to God. We're hoping that the news is going to be good, even better today. And uh, so that will just free us up again. And so I know that all of us are, are really wanting to see these masks somehow, a, a bit of a change there taking place. But it's great to hear you singing as well. You know, even though singing through a little bit, I could just hear a little bit, but that's okay. Even amen and clapping your hands was just great. That's, that's really, really good. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's something about getting up from out of your seat, getting up out of your home and coming along to God's house and joining together with other people. I think one of the things that people miss the most was just worship because you're together with others. And, uh, and so today, you know, we have that opportunity. And even if you're joining us online as well, if you haven't visited our church or in the vicinity, we'd love to have you as part of our guests. So uh, we're certainly living in uh, tumultuous times. And uh, who would have ever thought that 2020 would turn out this way? But it has. But we shouldn't, be, uh, we shouldn't be surprised. We should not be perturbed or disturbed because Jesus talked about the end time. He talked about the fact that these times would come to us. And we already know the end of the story. Amen. We already know the end of the story. I don't know if you've ever watched a movie or, or maybe you read a book and it gets really tense in the middle. But because you've watched it before, it just relieves the tension because you go, I know it's tense, but, but you know, he, he survives. And, and the same way with us. We know the end of the story. In fact, the Word of God tells us about the end times. In fact, one in four verses somehow alludes to the fact that Jesus is coming again and we need to be prepared. And so this is the last message and this is one of five services we're going to be doing today, so that's going to be interesting, uh, that I'm going to be speaking on the book of James, but I'm not going to be talking about relationships like we have been doing, but I'm going to be talking about this subject, getting ready for the end of the story. Everybody say that together, getting ready for the end of the story. You can write that in your chat if you're at home. Listen to what James says. Take it straight out of James. Be patient till the Lord's coming. And then James chapter 5, verse 9, the judge is near, ready to appear, standing right outside the door, one translation says. Jesus gives us an understanding of the end times as well. He says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 and 8, for nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes and pestilences and plagues. Does that sound like any, anything we're going through at the moment? In various places. But all of these will be the beginning, everybody say beginning, of the birth pains. It's not the end yet, but it's beginning. It's showing us that something's about to happen. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So Paul speaks about the end times in his epistles. He wrote half of the New Testament. Every one of them he's talking about. And then Peter talks about the end times. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Everyone say thief. And then the heavens will pass away, and the works that are done on it will be exposed. So, are we living in the end, in the end days? We certainly are. In fact, we're living at the latter end of the end days. And there's a whole lot of shaking that's going on in this world. In fact, Hebrews tells us that there's going to be a shaking of the world systems. Uh, I'll read you one more verse just to build a case here that we, we are where we are. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, it says, God says, And once and for all, I will, uh, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. You know, so we've just gone through a pandemic. We're still going through a pandemic. And you have to admit that we've learned a few things about how prophecies actually can be fulfilled. You know, we used to think about this as a, as a theory, but now we know that governments can control. They can monitor your every movement. They can, they can control what you, when you go to buy, when you, go, what, when you, when you can't go. They, they can track your every movement. They can regulate what you do. And really, it is scary. You know, we got drones looking over above us. There is, there is technology to identify who you are. And so we realize that it's not so implausible. 
what Jesus is saying. In fact, three times in the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew 24, Jesus says, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Everyone say, get ready. Get ready. Write it in the chat. Get ready. All right, write it down somewhere. Get ready. How do you get ready for the coming of the Lord? I want to give you five quick, quick things today. Number one, you get ready by focusing on the eternal. You know, the, the very fact that we are living where we are today says that we should be focusing more than what uh, this life has to give to us. You know, in fact, time and time again in the scripture says, don't just live for the here and now. Don't just live for the here and now. Don't just live for the here and now. Because if you live for the here and now, you are a fool. You need to live as wise. You need to live as those whose eyes are fixed, not just on the temporal, but also on the eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says, For we fix our eyes, read it with me, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is what? Temporary. And what is seen, unseen, is eternal. The fact is, we're on this planet for only a very short period of time in consideration of eternity. And so, and we're going to leave it all behind. I don't know, one of the things that, uh, we haven't been able to do for a little while is get on a plane and fly somewhere. We're really all missing it. And the first thing that they do when you get on a plane is they give you instructions. And you would know this. They prepare you for the flight. And they'll say things like, buckle your seatbelt. They'll say, uh, find out where the nearest exit is. They'll say uh, things like, uh, you know, put on your life jacket. All of this. And then one of the things that they always say is this, in case of emergency, Leave everything behind. Leave everything behind. You might say, well, what about my expensive suit? Leave it behind. What about my important documents? Leave it behind. You leave everything behind. We place far too much significance on the temporary. We need to focus on the eternal. And that's the first thing. Get ready. How do you get ready for the end of the story? Focus on the eternal. Focus on the eternal. Number two, how do you get ready for the end of the story? Clean out the garbage. In James chapter 2, verse 2, it says, So speak and act like people who will be judged. I, I've been noticing uh, since the restrictions are starting to lift, seeing what people are doing up and down my street. Uh, before, when the restrictions are on, it was like ghost town. Now, I'm starting to see them mowing their lawns, cleaning their cars, you, you know, just, just fixing up the windows, putting out the garbage, because it's amazing how much garbage you can accumulate if you let it lie there. And, and I, I notice that even if I miss one, one cycle of the rubbish bin collection, it's like, oh, no, now what am I going to do? And the reality is, in the same way in our own lives, we can accumulate rubbish. We can accumulate garbage that we need to clean out on a constant basis. And, and James gets very specific here. He says to us, get rid of anger. You can read it for yourself. Get rid of anger, for it does not accomplish the will of God. Get rid of evil thoughts that turn into evil desires, that turn into evil, evil actions because they will lead to death. Then he says, get rid of envy and jealousy and selfishness because it destroys relationships. We talked all about the relationships recently. And then it says, get rid of harsh words. Don't use your words to destroy, but use your words to build up other people. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of the rubbish. Get rid of the garbage. How do you prepare for the end of the story? Get rid of the rubbish and take on the person of Christ. Here's the next thing. How do you get ready? Cultivate a deep love for God and His Word. James chapter 4 verse 5 says, For the Spirit of God breathed into our hearts is a jealous lover who intensely desires to have more and more of us. Everybody say more and more of us. Do you know that God is jealous in the right sense of the word? And uh, He's not content uh, with the superficial. He's not content with the surface relationship because He is wholly committed to you. He wholly committed himself to you on the cross. He didn't go halfway. Now, let me tell you, seven years ago, Jason came and had a talk with me. And he said to me, he asked me permission whether he could marry my daughter Alyssa. 
Now, if when I asked him, why do you want to marry her? He'd said, oh, well, I kind of love her. Oh, yeah, she's all right. Oh, you know, she, it's, it's okay. How many know that I would not be in a happy father? Because I am wholly devoted to my daughter. I am absolutely committed to her. And I want, I want the, the one that she marries to be absolutely committed to her as well. And in the same way with God, God does not take the superficial. He doesn't take the, the surface kind of relationship. He wants it's all or nothing. You know, in the parable of the, of the sower, Jesus gives us a wonderful illustration of this. And he says, one day a sower went out and he sowed seed amongst different grounds. And some, uh, the ground was hard, and so it bounced off just about. And then he, he talks about a, a ground where the soil was good, but, uh, but it was not it was not very deep. And so immediately the, the plant grew. And, and Jesus said they received the word with joy and, and jubilation. And it was all good. But when the heat came on and when there was a shaking and when there was a storm, it just ripped apart. You see, and, and this is what God is, uh, is saying to us in the season. If we're going to survive, and let me tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll prophesy this. This is not the only shaking that's going to happen. There's going to be more shaking. I'm not going to be, I don't want to talk about being a, do, a doomsday person. But if we understand the end times, we know that, that there is a shaking that is coming. And this may be the beginning of the shaking. But only those who survive who have a deep love for God, who have deep love for prayer, who have a deep love for to getting together as the people of God, who have a deep commitment to Jesus Christ. Christ, everything else will be shaken. Everything else will be shaken. Paul says this in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, for me to live is Christ. For me, others can do what they like, but for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I don't care if they torture me, I don't care if they stone me, they beat me, I will not be shaken. So let me ask you this question. Have, have you gone during this shaking? How's your prayer life? Those of you at home, how's your prayer life? Are you still hungry for the Word of God? Are you still committed to, to gathering together with God's people, no matter what form that looks like? Because, you know, we couldn't gather together one-on-one. -on -one. Are you still trusting God even when you don't understand? Are you still committed to giving to the house of God? How are you going? Or has it shaken you? How deep are your roots? Because let me tell you this, that when the shaking occurs, the shallow drops off. Are you listening to the service or were you listening to the service? Kind of with your hands folded. Oh, yeah, let's see what they come up with today. With your feet up on the lounge or on, on the couch. And, or were you leaning in? And saying, what has God got to say to me today? You see, it's only that which is deep. It's only that which is committed. It's only that which is rich that will actually survive the shaking which is coming. Everybody say, me too. That's what I want. That's what I want. We need to pray. And I pray. My prayer is that, Lord, I want my faith, I want it to be rich. I want it to be deep. I, I want it to be solid. I want to be planted in the house of God. I want to be planted in God's word. Amen? So here's the next one. How do you get ready? for Jesus coming or at the end of the story, invest in the bank of heaven. Invest in the, everybody say, invest in the bank of heaven. <laughs> Those of you at home say it as well. Invest in the bank of heaven. Jesus tells us five times in the gospel, store up your treasure in heaven. Store up your treasure in heaven. Store up your treasure in heaven. Man, if he says it five times, it's got to be important. It has to be important. It's not what you have here on earth, it's what you store up, what you've got in heaven. You know, Jesus tells us a beautiful story. It's a very insightful story of a young man who comes to him and, and he says, Master, what do I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looks at him and says, well, you know what the, the commandments say. The commandments say that you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and keep the commandments. And the young man says this, he says, but Master, I've done that since I was a boy. And then Jesus looks at him, and I want you to, it's, it's found in, in Mark, and Mark was written by Peter, the apostle, and he was there. And, and Jesus looked at him, and he loved him. He loved him. He's not an evil man. 
He was not, he was not trying to test Jesus. He loved him. He saw that he was an honest young man. He was a sincere young man. He, he loved, he, loved uh, he wanted to do the will of God. And so Jesus gets right to the crux of the problem. And what he does, he exposes his heart. He tests him. This is the only time that Jesus asked someone to do this. He said, well, then if that's the case, go sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven. And the young man walked away. He lowered his eyes and he was very sad because it said he had a lot of riches. And then Jesus says these words here. He says in the Passion Translation, it says, How hard it is for those who put their trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. The problem was not that this man was rich. The problem was not that this man was influential. The problem was that he put his trust in his riches. The problem was not that he had riches. The problem was that he loved his riches more than God. The problem was that he was living for the temporary and not for the eternal. That was what the problem was. It says, put, store up your treasure in heaven. Store up your treasure in heaven, Jesus is saying to him. And sadly, this man missed out. And so can I ask you, both at home and here, now that we know the end of the story, where are you putting your treasure? Are you getting if you're like deluded by the fact that you think it's all here, the reality is we only live here for a very short period of time. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and and his righteousness and all these other things shall be what? Added to you. Added to you. Last one. Get ready. How do we get ready for the end of the story? Actively serve God. You know, God has given you and I uh, gifts and capacities and abilities. You might say, I don't have that. Yes, you do. There are some things that you do. It just comes natural to you. Can I say that those gifts and those abilities are meant to be used for God? Not just for yourself, but for God and for others. To help others in His kingdom, in the church, to, for you to use them. And if you don't use them, you actually harm yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an illustration, which really struck me. You remember the story of David. There's a very, very sad story of David found in 2 Samuel chapter 11, where David normally is is the king and he would lead the troops out into battle, but this time he decides to stay at home. He steps back from serving. And while he steps back from serving, he falls into adultery. He ends up killing one of his good friends. His baby dies. He He becomes a target of the enemy. And when you step back from serving, you become a target of the enemy because you're doing nothing. And look, and I understand this, that the reality is where uh, during lockdown, we had to lock down a a lot of things, a lot of ministries uh, were locked down and we had to step back. But guess what? We're reopening again. And now, if I got a word for you, it's not time to step back. It's time to step forward. It's time to step forward again. It's time to put your hand up and say, hey, I'm okay. I had a bit of a rest and now now it's time for me to get involved. Because how do we prepare for the end of the story? You actively serve God. Actively serve God. Okay, let me sum it up here. Summing up this whole thing. Everything is pointing toward the end of the story. Jesus is coming back. He might come back in my lifetime. I don't know. But there's a very big possibility that he will. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand before him. Whether it's his coming or whether it's my time to meet him, embarrassed and ashamed. Because I spend all of my time and I spend most of my abilities on myself and on the temporary. I want to be able to say, Lord, I've served you. Just like the Apostle Paul says, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So how do we get ready for the end of the story? We position ourselves. You shake yourself from where you are and you position yourself. And I wonder whether you're joining us 
uh, at home and here, I want us to stand and maybe pray, pray this prayer. If you can pray this with me, that we start to shift some things. We talked about a year of shift, that we shift ourselves right in the middle of God's will. And we, can I just say that whenever you're journeying somewhere, that you have to continually shift. If you take the wrong turn, thank God I've got a GPS that always brings me back. I'm terrible with directions, and it shifts me back to where I need to go. And that's the way the Christian life is. That's why the, Peter says, I remind you of the things. I know that you know them, but I remind you to get back on the right track so that you're living a life that is effective for God. Amen. Amen. So can you pray with me? Lord, we, we make some adjustments today. Lord God, we make adjustments in our in our life, Lord God, if we've just taken a little bit of the wrong track, we've got caught up with things that really don't matter all that much, which are insignificant in regards to that which is eternal. And Lord God, today, Lord, we focus on the eternal rather than the temporal. Lord God, we make that, we reposition ourselves and say, oh Lord, we want to make some decisions there. Lord, we clean out the garbage, Lord. Lord God, we cultivate a deep love for you. Lord, we don't want to be shallow. We want to be deep in our relationship with you. Lord, we want to have a hunger for the word of God. We want to, we want to know you, Lord God. Lord, we, we, we lose ship. Lord, we invest in the bank of heaven. Lord God our resources, our ability. And Lord, we commit ourselves to serving you in this new season. Lord God, that we commit to serving you with the gifts that we have. We will not step back. We will step forward. Everybody say step forward. We will not step back. We will step forward into your will and that which you have for us, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can I just say a couple more things? You know, some people say, why is it that Jesus has not come back yet? Well, I'll read it to you in Scripture. God is not wanting that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There are still some more to come. The number is not filled yet. And maybe whether you're at home or whether you are here in this meeting, maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Maybe he's waiting for you. Maybe he's waiting for you to come home. And can I ask you this question? If you were to stand before God today, would you know that you're ready? Or would you feel ashamed? You say, how do I get ready? It's found in the scripture. Repentance. There is no other way. I can't sugarcoat it. You have to turn from the way you're living to live for God. You place yourself under God's authority. You say, Lord, come and live in me. Come and make your home in me. Lord, I desire to do your will. Let me tell you, God is calling you today. He's calling you by name. He's waiting for you. That's why he hasn't come back yet. I want everyone to close their eyes just for a moment, whether you're here or at home. And, and if that's your prayer, you say, I need, to, I need to come back home. I need to give my life to the Lord. It would be an honor for me to pray with you. You say, I don't know if my life is right with God, but I want to make sure that it is right with God. I don't want to feel ashamed and, and, and embarrassed. If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand. If you're here in this meeting, slip up your hand so that I know who I'm praying for. If you're at home, just press the raise hand button. And we're going to pray a prayer in a moment and lead you to God. It would be an honor for me to do that today. Fantastic. That's so good. Just keep on reaching out to God. Father, let's pray this prayer together. Will you pray this prayer with me? Everybody at home and here, Lord, this day, I place myself under your authority. I turn from my ways to going your way. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to come and live inside of me. I desire to do your will. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Why don't we put our hands together for those who made that decision. Let me tell you, if you made that decision today, your name is written in the book of life. And you are a child of God. And we just want to help you in your walk with Him. 
And if you allow us to do that, that would be absolutely great. If you, pray, if you press the prayer request button, somebody would just reach out to you in your, in your faith. You know, why don't we just continue to worship God here? And, uh, let's, and at home, we're going to be singing a song of worship to Him. But let's give Him praise. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the end of the story. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.